Well, welcome back everyone to the launch of the rescue. Great to see you all here. We wanna check where people came from. Has anyone traveled from Kurenbong? Yeah, uh, just a few. Just a few? Yeah. Um, let's see how far, anyone who's come from somewhere else further away in New South Wales? Uh, anyone from Paris? Oh yes, we've got, um, I know these from Sydney. Anyone else nah. from Sydney here? Sydney. Yeah, there's a few Sydney people. Whoa. Has anyone come from further away from a different state? Oh yes, we've got some Melbourne, and I mm -hmm. think there's a Queensland over there. Wow, that's awesome. So there's a few people from all around the place there, yeah. aren't you? Well, welcome to the, um, the launch of The Rescue. We've been really looking forward to having this happen today. But before we do anything else, let's all stand up, and we're gonna start with a couple of songs. If there's any kids, feel free to come down the front. Oh, come, yeah, come on down the front. Come kids. on down the front. <coughs> and we're going to sing Best Way to Go. Yeah. 
Way to go, isn't it? Can you hear me, Arnie? Uh, I, yeah, yeah, what'd oh, you, what'd you say? I said, following Jesus is the best way to go, isn't it? Absolutely. It is. That's all I want to do. And we're here with all the King's kids. So we're going to sing, I'm a King's kid. So join in with us as we sing, I'm a King's kid. You ready, guys? Yes, I think everyone here is a King's kid. kids which is great we've got one more song we're going to do which is a really active song you oh, could say we'll teach you the actions and it actually then splits into girls and boys doing things at different times so when we split girls can follow nat and the girls and the boys can follow me and the boys in the front and pj gets confused sometimes so he does all sorts of things so this is how it goes get your hands and go in out out, up, up, down, down, nod your head, mm. turn around. I can't do that. Let's try that again. In, out, out. up, down, down. Nod, nod your, your head. head, turn around. Turn around. And this is the other part you need to know. How high can you reach when you're up mm. on your toes? How far can you stretch? How low can you go? You'll never get to the end of how much God loves mm. you. Now that you know that really well, we're going to put it all together. So let's see how we go. So everyone standing up. <clears throat> Here we go. Starts with this part. Oh yeah.
active. Yeah, so now that we've got all the wriggles out of everybody. Oh, that was great fun. Um, thank you, King's Kids. And we've got um, Ella, and Zane, Ella and Josiah. As we continue this afternoon, we invite you to bow your heads as we welcome God into this space with us. Dear Jesus, today we acknowledge your greatness, for we, on, for we know you only want good for us. Thank you for making plans to protect us, to be with us and, ultimate, and ultimately to rescue us. We are sorry that sometimes we don't stop to listen to you or follow the plans, your plans, and we pray that you will open our eyes to see the goodness that you have planned for us. Help us to know that we can trust you in all things. Thank you for the children that you created all around the world. We pray that you will continue to bless projects like the rescue so that they can continue to run and so that we, your children, can be blessed as we grow up. We thank you for being with us today and every day. Amen. Amen. Oh, good day there, Pastor Darren. Uh, hi, Arnie, how are you? Oh, I'm good. Are we doing another balloon kaboom? Oh, I'm not here to do a balloon kaboom. Oh, you're not? Oh, what I are do, we doing? I love doing balloon kabooms this morning, but yeah. I want to do a soapbox. Oh, so I've seen you on the soapbox. Yeah, so on, on I'm, sitting on, I'm sitting on a soapbox, yeah. so yeah. that's quite appropriate, isn't it? I thought oh. you could help me do it. So, oh. okay. I'm yeah. going to tell you a soapbox, Arnie. Yeah. And see what you think. I'm sure you're old enough and wise enough to probably get some of what I'm saying. Okay. You've raised a few kids and yeah. grandkids. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So here we go, see if this works. Right. So, a number of years ago now, back in 2003, I think it was, this book was released by George Barner called Transforming Children into Spiritual Champions. It was a world changer when it came to the children's ministries movement. Because in the foreword, George Barner says, I didn't just miss the boat when it came to ministry. He's a pastor, written books on church growth and vision and turning vision to action. He says, I didn't just miss the boat. I missed an entire ocean. And George Barner said, if I could go back and do my ministry all over again, I would base it around children and their families. Amen. He discovered in his research what's now been called the 4 to 14 window. Mm -hmm. Now, that is? Uh, yeah, well, that's when people give their lives to Christ. They're most, most likely, likely. <clears throat> to make a <clears throat> lifelong decision to follow Jesus. That's a yeah. lifelong yep. in the 4 to 14 window. It's called the 4 to 14 window of Jesus. 80% of all who follow Christ and choose to do so do so by the age of 14 and 90% by the age of 25. Wow. I ask the question, where do most churches spend their financial evangelistic dollars? I don't know your board, but that's a question to think about. Where does most investment happen? In this window or somewhere else? So that's what we call the 4 to 14 window. Just recently, as in late last year, George Barner, because it's now old research, he redid it and said, does this still the same stats work? So he's just released this book late last year called Raising Spiritual Champions. And this is what he says in the latest research he's done, which is repeating what he did all those years ago. He says, if we do not get it right with young children, the chances are good that we will never see those people mature into real disciples of Jesus. Did you get that? Mm -hmm, I got that. Again, the four to 14 window. In fact, it's that a person's worldview, we're talking about worldview today, starts developing in the 15-month to 18-month age range. That's, that's pretty young. Mm. And is largely in place by the age of 13. That's the prime window of opportunity, George Barner says, for discipleship. 
He says, our research suggests that parents are among the six most dominant sources of influence on the minds and hearts of children. However, we also learned that as the child progresses through their development period, parents are usually not the primary source of impact and their influence wanes as the child ages. Who or what has the greatest impact, George Barner asks. The arts, entertainment, media, to which our children are exposed, through a variety of media, television, movies, social media, recorded music, books, video games, radio, and audio streaming. And short form videos, thousands upon thousands of moral, spiritual messages are sent directly to our children every single day. That's of concern for me as a parent, but also more particularly now as a brand new grandparent. What messages are we impact sending to our kids and allowing them to be exposed to? While there does not appear to be a coordinated effort to foist a particular worldview upon our children, he says it is just as clear that a biblical worldview is rarely conveyed to young people through those media. More often than not, the philosophical foundation of the messages conveys either that there is no supreme being or that the recipient of the message is their own deity. That's the message coming through from multimedia to our children today. You can see why I'm so excited about the launch of the rescue today. Oh, because yeah, it too. offers a world view that mm -hmm. says that we have a God, that God is in control, it answers the question of why bad things happen to good people, and it gives a message of hope as well that this is not the end, there's more to come. Amen. I'd rather that world view yeah. than sometimes what the world is offering to our kids. Maggie Hamilton, a well-known Australian sociologist and researcher, said, in a few short years, kids have become isolated, spending worrying amounts of time on devices and at home. Too often, they lack one-on-one -on -one attention and touch, creative and spontaneous real-life play, and they have little or no connection with nature. That's here in Australia, and that's Maggie Hamilton, who's a well-known sociologist, mentioning that. She said, our children are also losing connection to their family and cultural stories. Brennan talked about stories this morning in the, in the worship service. If you didn't see that, go back and watch it on live stream. Drowned out by wall-to-wall -wall entertainment and endless mind-numbing details of the vacuous lives of celebrities, leaving them little or nothing to hold on to. That's right here in Australia. But also Josh McDowell says, if we don't get it right with children, today before the age of 18, or actually before the age of 12. This is by the 12th birthday. You won't reach them. Mm. That's Josh McDowell, well-known um, theologian as well. We won't reach them by the age of 12. After 12, he says, we're, we're really up against it. That's why the rescue and resourcing children is so, so important. Again, you read Deuteronomy, it says the road map forward, it's talking about these things when you sit at home, when you walk along the road, when you lie down, and when you get up. It needs to become a part of our 24 seven living. And that's the road map to um, correct this. Um, and in case one of Ellen White says, she identified what George Barnes just again found, that children, young, very young children are able to understand the things of salvation. And that's what the rescue is all about. The worldview that God has a plan. A plan for each and every child. Remember the laws in Malachi says, the last few verses in the Old Testament. I'm a servant Moses. The decrees and laws I gave and horror for all Israel. See, I will send you the prophet Elijah for the great and dreadful day of the Lord comes. Full stop. And as Advents, we preach a good sermon about that. But often we don't finish the passage. The passage ends with this. He will turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the hearts of the children to their parents or else I will come and strike the land with total destruction. Full stop. End of the Old Testament. Whatever the larger message is, 
begins with you and me as parents and as a brand new grandparent. Now, as I puffed out my chest right then, impacting our children with the rescue, the great controversy worldview. And talk about resourcing. We have a real live author that resources children right here. I'm going to ask Amanda to come up, and I'll have a mic here. Yeah, so I'm going to walk across here, down. Arnie. Thanks for helping me, Arnie. Yeah, no worries, boy. Thanks, Darren. Amanda happens to be related to me, um, which I'm quite proud of. It's my sister-in-law. You've been um, writing books for how long now? Oh, a little while. <laughs> Um, probably the first one that I wrote for the union was 2017, but I think um, I released one back in 2008 for older children, oh, well, teens. Yes. Do you know how many books all up you've written now? About 22. 22 <laughs> books, and most of them are aimed at teens or children. Mm -hmm. So tell me um, what you do in your, what, what's, what's a day look like for you? Well, it's fun. Imagine being able to turn your hobby into your job. It's such a wonderful blessing. Um, I guess at the moment I'm working on another one of those books there. This, this is, one? This is this the latest. This is brand new, just out last week? This yes, week? just arrived last week. It hasn't even been launched yet, so you're the very first people to see it. And I got the first box, by the way, so I'm quite proud of that because <laughs> I, I'm hopefully I'm almost going to be close to winning the Top Salesman Award for the oh, these books. Oh, absolutely, yes. But yeah, um, this tells a story of who? The McMahon brothers, a long time ago, um, even before I was born, two young gentlemen found out about the story of uh, Jesus, the Adventist church, and um, they decided they wanted to come all the way up here, right to this very place, and they wanted to study about Jesus. And so they, they didn't just come on a train like most people did. They built a rowboat and they rowed up the coast of New South Wales. They didn't get all the way to Avondale because they got to Coogee Beach and decided that they didn't want to row anymore and they sold their boat and then they used the money to come to Avondale College where one became a teacher and the other one did doctrinal studies so that he could become an LE. And so, the Mahan family is still a big name in the yes. Adventist Church in Australia today. So they were part of the first McMahon people that's still around influencing the church today. So it's amazing when I research these stories, I find these names and I go, oh, I remember that name from college and that name and the influence that these families have had continue all this time and trickle down. So um, influence is awesome. That's number seven or six? Six. That one's number seven. Yeah. Number seven in the series, The Angels of Australia series telling Adventist stories about what God has done here in Australia. And this is a brand new one too, just before Christmas that one came out. What's that one about? That one's about brands that you see in the supermarket and the people behind them and who started those stories. And many of them made a big difference in their communities because most of them were Christian. Yeah, my mum had six kids. And to save us from nagging her sometimes, she would tell us some of these stories. In fact, this is dedicated to my mum, so, which I, cry when I read it, but um, yeah, she told these stories to her boys, so when we saw Cadbury, or when we saw Arnott's, or when we saw Colgate, we didn't just know the toothpaste or the biscuit, we knew the story behind it, and it's often a Christian story. So I have boxes of these, but where do you get them otherwise? You can order them online from the Hope Shop, you can get them from the ABC. Hmm. And we want to thank God for Amanda, and for most of this product here, the Chronicles, I mean, not the Chronicles, um, the Chronicles of Narnia? No, <laughs> it's not. It's almost the Chronicles of Narnia. <laughs> the Hunter Chronicles, yeah. The Hunter Chronicles. What's that telling us about? Those are the stories of young people coming to know Jesus. So the first four cover our doctrines, but you don't necessarily need to notice them. They're sort of woven through. But there's also handbooks that go with them so that you can use them for studies as well. And um, they, they're the stories of the coming to faith of a young lad from Melbourne who went out to live in the country. So is, it, is there six or seven in that series? There's eight. Eight. Mm. Eight. It's, it's like the Chronicles of Narnia. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's better. It's better. Oh. Um, so it's a narration that puts our fundamental beliefs, understanding worldview as Adventists into a story you can read to your kids. Thanks, Amanda. We thank God for someone like you and your journey into Seeds of Faith and a, a whole resourcing house that that is. Let's thank Amanda Views.
Thanks, Darren and Amanda. One of the things that I guess we want to illustrate this afternoon is we are doing the, the rest. Did I jump in, Tiani? I, oh, the video. Let me finish by saying this then. The, the church is spending a lot of money in investing in children. And we know that the children are going to continue to make an impact generation to generation to generation. And I was just sharing with, with um, Pastor Darren before, the, the investment the, the church makes will total into the, the millions of dollars each year. And so the, the resources that are being put forward, whether it's from the Australian Union Conference and the Hunter Chronicles, the, the TUI series, which um, Lidiana has put together, um, the Rescue or King's Kids, these are significant things. And so we're going to give you a glimpse this afternoon of what all is this as we try and pull this together as a resource for parents and a resource for children to grow as young disciples. So we'll go to the video now, Tiani. That looks a really easy thing to produce, doesn't it? One of the, the easiest things to do in producing content um, is pressing the record button. One of the most difficult things to do in producing any type of program is the background research that goes into it. And so we got a question this afternoon in terms of why the rescue? Now, we look at the, the King's Kids, we understand where, where that started, and Darren shared that this morning in, in, in terms of um, lockdown within, what, 48, 24, 48 hours of the first lockdown being announced, King's Kid was on the agenda. And that weekend, thanks to this team and, and Lid and others, the first King's Kids episode went to, to air. So that was a huge effort in order to do that. But as we look forward from there, Tiani, just give us a glimpse of you know, we've got the question here, why the rescue? But give us a glimpse into the, the research that you did in order to bring us forward to this point today. Yeah, so kids, I actually want to talk to you. And I just want to see a show of hands. How many of you are four years old or five, four or five? Okay, so there's a few of you out there. So when we started planning this, it was actually back in November of 2021. And the reason we started planning something extra, something beyond kids' kids, is because we value you. And we want you to know, as you grow up, that there is a plan for you, a God who loves you. And so we sat down and we said, King's Kids is great, but we have so much of the story that we wanna tell you about God and where his heart is for you. And so we began that planning journey and it started as tiny little ideas. Have you ever had an idea in your head? And it kind of grows and it got to the point where I had a whole board of sticky notes and we were rearranging things and we were looking at stories in the Bible and saying there's so many good ones, but we've got to get from here to here. And so we looked at some of the key stories that really show how intentional God is about his love for you and the plan that he has for you. And we started to pull some of those out and it was in 
Um, we started researching with Adventist families and saying to them, what do you guys want your kids to know about? We did some surveying online and found out some of the struggles that your parents are having in trying to help connect you with God. And we started to put all of the pieces of a jigsaw puzzle together. And then it was in February of 2022 that we finally put together a document that said, here's the idea. We want to teach you guys, you kids, that our God is here and he wants to rescue you from what's going on in your life. And from there, we went through some other planning phases and we did some more researching and we looked at what the Bible has to say because it's a beautiful book full of hope for us. And we looked at what some other people, Ellen White had said as well, and we found this beautiful journey that came together that we wanted to take you on. And so then we did some interviewing in schools and we tested some things out. And then as we got to July of 2022, things started to move real quick. And we got ideas and names and pictures and everything started to come together. And this is all because we love you and we know there's a God who loves you too. And that's why we do this. Thanks, Tiani. When we, uh, Tiani prepared that document for us, we then shared that with the, the General Conference. And the General Conference based on that in an application said, we will give the, the overflow offering for the 13th Sabbath of, of last quarter, 2022, 2022. And so the, the World Church, as well as us here, have contributed to funding um, the Rescue Series. So this is a, a huge thing that has gone global and will go global with, what, with the, what happens today with the launch of the program. Kimberly, I know you've put some things on the, the screen for us to look through. Just drill into a little bit more into the, the overview of the, the topics and the themes and objectives from the, uh, for the Rescue Series. For the Rescue Series. Um, we can put up on the screen, um, this is some of the information on the background, but there are three seasons of the rescue which takes you from the basically from the fall of Lucifer right through to the second coming, New Earth restoration. And season one, which is the season we're starting to launch today, starts with Oh No, which is the fall of Lucifer. We're going to be watching that very soon. And goes through to stories about Moses, flicking to the next screen. Season two, which will be coming down the track, about how we needed rescue in Egypt, dreams, all sorts of stuff. And it gets to episode 21, which is really exciting, when the rescuer arrives. Who is the rescuer? Does anyone know who the rescuer of this world is? Jesus is the rescuer, and he is going to arrive in that episode. And when we go to season three, it goes on to some of the things that Jesus did when he was here, what he taught us, going on to when he went back to heaven, and what we've been left to do. We look at some of the reformers, and finally, the exciting part, when Jesus comes back again, and what happens after that. So it's a really great journey that we get to go on. And there's a main key puppet family, if we go to the next slide, called the King family. Now, they don't know anything about God. The mum, when she was a little child, had her grandmother had read her some stories about Jesus in the Bible, but the dad doesn't know anything, the kids don't know anything about Jesus. And this whole series is tracing the journey as they discover and learn about the rescuer and learn about what he does. And there's all sorts of things and adventures that happen along the way. And they learn all about these amazing stories in the Bible. You now we've got um, Amanda here and she's been talking about the, the Hunter Chronicles and, and these other resources, so a well-experienced author in, in that realm. Kimberly, to put all of this narrative together with what Tiani's been saying and what you've shared, how many words make up the script for the three seasons of the rescue? The three seasons of the rescue, so far it's about 140,000 words um, and it's a puppet musical because there's lots of songs, so there's 140 different songs in the whole three seasons. So it's a very, very big project with lots in it. Who writes the songs, Kimberly? I write the songs. Why, why have you... Why have you brought songs into the, the rescue series? Why, what's important about that? The, the songs are a way of getting that key that message, it gets through filters and it gets into you. So when you've got an experience happening, this song comes back to bother you. Has anyone had a song going round and round in their head that they can't get rid of? Something will trigger that. So if we can plant these song seeds in our kids and get these key messages later in life, like Darren was saying, later in life, those seeds are there and they will germinate. And 
as you're older, you'll think back to the songs you learned as a child and they're still impacting you. So they're a really great way of teaching children. So down at the, the office in Sydney, the division office, we've got a, a TV there that, has, that monitors the Hope Channel signal coming in to make sure that it's, it's operating. And the King's Kids song comes up of a morning and you can guess what we're seeing then for the rest of the day, can't you? I'm a King's Kid. And it just on and on all through the day. Pastor Darren, in terms of children's ministries, you've talked about the importance in that 440 window. What is it about the Rescue Series, and you've been involved with as well, that will make, um, have, uh, have an impact on the children moving forward in showing and watching King's, uh, um, the rescue? Yeah, I talked about the fact that the world, the enemy has plans for our children um, and wants to implant all sorts of worldviews, just a whole mixture out there that, that people are promoting and, and there's no clear worldview really being promoted, but it's what comes through. Um, the rescue is able to go through many different media channels and able to impact children from a different angles. And what I like about it is it's the Conflict of the Ages series, which has been a dream to get into a kid's verge for a long, long time. I was saying today, back yeah. to Janet, I think Janet Reg is here somewhere. I remember talking to Janet about this when she was a few years ago. <laughs> But uh, yeah, a long time ago, actually, um, she had this dream right back then, and to see this dream become a reality today, where kids can be impacted by a positive worldview amongst all the worldviews is just fantastic. And um, I think it's gonna really um, impact the life journey of our children going forward in a powerful way as, mm. as this, this engages in our schools and in our churches and in our homes. Thanks, Darren. Just back to you, Kimberly. in terms of every episode, just give us an overview of what elements we see in the, um, each episode. Uh, each episode, it's got um, a lot of values built in, so the puppet characters will be facing some sort of dilemma or some sort of drama that's happened, and we dig into the Bible to find a parallel story of what was happening there as well. So it's linking real Bible stories with real life experiences, things that our kids are going through. When you'll see this episode today, you'll find there's a bully in the playground. Has anyone had a bully at their school? Someone that's been a bit mean to them? So we're gonna find there's, there's some characters like that in the rescue and it's learning how do we deal with these problems, everyday problems that we're facing and what plan has the rescuer got for us? What are the pathways we're choosing to take? And the big theme of the battle between good and evil that is out there, the choices we make each day impact ourselves and those people around us. Thanks, Kimberly. I want to invite um, Mark Pierce to come, Pastor Mark Pierce to come and join us uh, now. We'll head off, and he's going to give us just a little bit more of an overview in terms of the background to the writing of the series, and then we'll go on and watch an episode together. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Wayne. Girls and boys, I want to talk to you especially. Have you ever wondered why sometimes there's a struggle inside you to do something naughty? when you know that you should do something good. Yeah? Where does that come from? How did it get inside us? What happened? So what we're looking at today is why is there bad and good in our world? Where did it come from? What are its origins? Now, that's, yeah, that's the picture I want. <laughs> Well, the, uh, there's Auntie Ellen up there, right? I'm going to call her Auntie Ellen, so you can too, right? Ellen White. When she was still quite young, God showed her something. God showed her in vision the story of the great controversy, as she put it, between good and evil, between God and Satan. And if we can have the book See the one on the left? It's your left, my right. That's the book, The Great Controversy Between Christ and Satan. First published way before anybody in this room was ever born. <laughs> and she expanded it and filled it out until those five red ones that you can see up there. And there's at least 500 pages in each book. When you get big, I hope you read them. Okay. Because I think 
that it will help you a lot. The full series is the story of how evil started, where it came from, what God's doing about it, and how it's going to end. I'm looking forward to the end part, aren't you? So what we're going to look at today is we're going to look at, oh no, how did sin get started? So let's sit back and enjoy episode two of The Rescue. Go home. You're not allowed in this park. I don't like you. Hey, stop that, Cade. Leave her alone. She's just a waste of space. Don't be mean. That is not true. Take it back. No way. I call it as I see it. Ignore him. He doesn't know what he's talking about. That is so not true. Hey, what's going on? Cade is just leaving. I will stay or go wherever I like. No one can tell me what to do. I'm staying right here. Why don't you all leave? I think we will. Come on, Mel. Let's go. Wait. Ali, where is that girl that was sitting under the tree? You mean Chloe? Is that what her name is? She was just here. She must have gone while we were talking. This is my park. I will decide who is allowed in it. I don't like that new girl, Chloe, so she is not allowed here. This is so not your park. Anyone is allowed to come here anytime they like. Come on, let's go, Ali. Cade, oh Cade, hurting others is not the answer to your pain. I am here to guide you, to help you discern and make right choices. But you aren't listening. I love you so much, but the pathway you are choosing right now is not going to end well. how mean Kate is. He always picks on people. He's just a big bully. Poor Chloe. I wonder where she is. She probably just went home. Don't worry about her. She never hangs out with other people. She just stays by herself. I haven't seen her around before. Her family just moved here. They live on my street. And I met her two older sisters. They are really fun. I think she has a little brother too. So, have you met Chloe before? Sort of. She doesn't really say much. And while I was talking to her sisters, she just walked away. Maybe she is shy. I don't know. Maybe. I think there is more to Chloe than we know. I don't think she wants to stay by herself. Anyway, we need to practice for the school musical auditions. La 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 la. God, are you there? Do you care? I feel so lonely. I have no one to talk to. I feel like no one understands me. Mum is happily married now to my new stepdad and too busy with this new family. I think she's forgotten my dad. My new stepsisters, they have each other and I, I feel like I don't fit. And now that there is a new little brother in the family, oh, 
I just feel invisible. I can't even go and hide in the park anymore because that boy Kate, he doesn't like me either. God, oh God, are you there? God, oh God, do you care? Oh, this pain I'm trying to hide. I'm hurting deep inside. I've heard you love and care for kids like me. God, oh God, are you there? God, oh God, do you care? Because I don't know what to do. How can I get through? Can I trust you? Oh God, do you care? Because I'm hurting deep inside I've heard you love and care for kids like me God, oh God, are you there? God, oh God, do you care? Because I don't know what to do How can I get through? Can I trust you? Oh God, do you care? Because I don't know what to do How can I get through? Can I trust you? Oh God, do you care? Chloe, I see you I hear you I love you Open your heart to those around you Who are trying to reach you Open your heart and ears to what I have to share with you. I love you so much. Let me help you through those people who are around you. Hey Jack, have you been to the park lately? I was there yesterday playing football with Jono. Was Cade there? I didn't see him. Why? Well, I was there today and he was being really mean to this new girl called Chloe. He said that he was the boss of the park and he will decide who can be there. He's not the boss of the park. I'll keep an eye out next time I'm there. I just don't understand why some people can be so mean. He even made her leave. Hello, you two. Did I hear you say something about someone being mean? Yes, this boy named Cade was picking on this new girl called Chloe. That doesn't sound very nice. Mum, why are people so unkind to each other? Why do people hurt each other? I just don't get it. Tell me why can people be so unkind? Why can they act so mean? It really doesn't seem to be right. What can the problem be? It is so sad, it is so wrong It makes me feel so mad To see somebody act that way It really is not all Tell me why can people be so unkind? Why can they act so mean? It really doesn't seem to be right what can the problem be? Hmm. All very good questions, Mel. Hmm, let me think. It started the day Cade was born. Jack? Well, it started well before that. That book, the book we were looking at the other day. I seem to remember it tells something about this. If I am right, it was the first struggle between good and bad. And that struggle has continued ever since. Can we read the story, please? Yes, of course. This war actually began in heaven a long time ago when Lucifer challenged Jesus. Have you heard of Lucifer before? Hmm, I've heard of the devil, that guy with the pitchfork, and I've seen some pictures. 
Oh, and I have heard of Satan. Is that the same person? I believe so, Mel. Hang on. Heaven. A place so amazing, awesome, wonderful, that no words can do justice to explaining how incredible it is. And best of all, heaven is where God, God of the whole universe dwells. In heaven, the angels radiated with light, light flowing from just being in God's presence. Across the universe, all created beings dwelt in perfect harmony, joy, and love. The Son of God, Jesus, shared his Father's throne, and around the throne gathered the holy angels, 10,000 times 10,000, singing songs of praise in their beautiful, melodious voices. Lucifer was an important angel in heaven, holding a high position in God's government. He was extremely intelligent and more beautiful than any other angel. A special light beamed out of him. In fact, only God's Son, Jesus Christ, was above him. As Lucifer thought about this, he started to feel jealous of Jesus. He wanted the honor and glory Jesus was receiving. When all the other angels lovingly bowed down to Jesus, Lucifer also bowed, but his heart had begun to fill with envy and pride that grew into hatred. When God and Jesus had a meeting about things they were planning, Lucifer was upset that he was not included. In his high position, Lucifer was honoured by the other angels. He liked how they obeyed and respected him. He looked at how beautiful he was. He thought about how intelligent he was. He reflected on how he loved the attention and honour the other angels gave him. And the more he thought about it, the more he began to desire the same power and honour as God. So Lucifer made a decision. Full of envy and pride, he decided that he would never again bow or submit to God and Jesus. Instead, Lucifer would seek to be equal to God and to replace God, to become God. It was at this moment that the perfect harmony in heaven was broken. Lucifer began to talk to other angels, trying to get them on his side. He told them it was unfair that Jesus had a higher honour than he did. Because Lucifer was loved, admired, respected, many of the other angels listened to Lucifer. He convinced one third of them to turn against God. Lucifer and his followers began an open rebellion. Lucifer and his followers would not submit to the authority of God, and so there was war in heaven. This resulted in Lucifer and his followers being thrown out. Those remaining in heaven were saddened by the loss of their friends. Lucifer refused to turn back from the pathway he had begun. The rebellion of Lucifer was going to be a lesson that everyone in the universe would see for years to come. It would show the terrible results of sin. Sin that began with pride. That is really sad that he went from being the most magnificent angel in heaven to what he is now. Yes, it really is, Mel. What did it say was the cause or start of this in Lucifer? Did it say it was his pride? So it started with pride. Oh, that's where evil began. And possibly part of why Cain might act the way he does? Hmm. Couldn't God have just wiped out Lucifer there and then and stopped this all from happening? I guess he could have. 
I wonder why he didn't. Another good question, Mel. I'm not sure of the answer to that one. Hey, Jono. Yeah, what's up, Jack? Mel was telling me that Kate has been picking on kids in the park, being really mean to them. That sounds like something Cade would do. I don't know why he's so mean. Do you think it has anything to do with his pride? His pride? What do you mean by that? Well, we were looking at the book with Mum and she read about Lucifer and how evil began. When someone's pride is hurt, they can react badly. Mmm. Is pride when you feel pretty good about yourself? Yeah, I think so. Pride is like a feeling that you respect yourself and deserve to be respected by other people. My dad said he was proud of me the other day when I kicked that last winning goal in our game against Pacific Grove. Yeah, that was a good game. I won't forget about that one. Me either. And I've heard my teachers talking about me taking pride in my schoolwork, which I think means to take care and do my best. And that's a good thing then, right? At least I know my teachers would say so. But I think if you are too proud, you don't listen to or take advice or correction from others. I guess so. I don't really like it much when someone tells me I need to fix or change something. Me either. I hate it when it happens. I don't like to get things wrong. So pride can be a problem for us too, Jack, if we don't want to listen and take advice. Yeah, you could be right, Jono. I'm going to talk about this to my dad, Jack. Anyway, see you tomorrow. See you, Jono. Hey, Dad. Yes, Jono. Do you know the story in the Bible about the war in heaven and Lucifer rebelled against God? Yes, Jono. That is a sad story. When sin first began. Well, Dad, Jack and I were talking about this today. Do you think it had anything to do with pride? It sure did, Jono. A certain amount of pride is a good thing. Feeling good about yourself taking care in what you do, that is important. But when you begin to feel that you are better than others, you can be always bragging about yourself. When you don't want to admit when you have done wrong, that is when pride can be a bad thing. And that is what happened to Lucifer, back when sin first entered the universe. OK, I think I see what you mean, Dad. When Lucifer let pride take over, when he rebelled against God, and what is more, he convinced one-third of the angels to believe him and also turn away from God. It was a very sad day. Hmm, so pride can be a problem then. It sure can, Jono. It really is important to take care of yourself Always strive to do your best And not settle for something less But do not become boastful Or brag of what you do Do not let your pride control your life Be respectful Be courteous Accept correction When you do wrong Listen to advice And take it in your stride do not let your pride control your life. Be respectful. Be courteous. Accept correction when you do wrong. Listen to advice and take it in your stride. Do not let your pride control your life. Do not let your pride control your life. Do not let your pride control your life. Hi, Mrs. Jones. Oh, hello, Mrs. King. Good to see you again. <laughs> no kids today? How can I help you? I hope you don't mind, but I have a few questions that I am not sure the answer to. We were looking at how Lucifer was once a beautiful angel, but he became very proud and jealous and he rebelled against God. Why didn't God just wipe him out there and then? 
The quick answer to that question, Sally, is justice and mercy. When Lucifer rebelled against God, the whole universe was in shock. Never before had they seen sin and rebellion. If God has taken Lucifer, Satan, out of existence right there and then, all the angels and people that came after would have followed God out of fear, not love. He has made it clear he wants us to have a choice to follow him. So what you're telling me is that God is a God of love, justice and mercy. God is a God of justice and mercy. It is his great love that the whole universe can see. Cause he's always just, he's always right. He's a God of goodness and love. He wants us to love him, not through fear of what he'll do. But because of his great love for me and you. God is a God of justice and mercy. It is his great love that the whole universe can see. Cause he's always just, he's always right. A God of goodness and light. He wants us to love Him, not through fear of what He'll do, but because of His great love for me and you. The pain and suffering that has come from the choices Satan made is still being felt throughout the whole earth and it's being seen by the universe. I too feel the pain and hurt that you all do. This is not what I wanted for any of you. My love for you all is so deep. In time you will see and understand my love and justice for you all. I need it. So there it is, the first showing of the rescue within Australia, within the world. So thank you for being part of this afternoon's journey. Kimberly, we look at that for 22 minutes. What does that mean to you to see that and now re recognize and realize that this is the launch of it going global? It's such an important message that God loves us, wants to rescue us, so seeing this coming out where it can hopefully impact lives and they can know that there is a God up there, he has a plan. We just wanna see lives changed, lives touched and this is another step in creating something to reach people for Jesus. Hmm. As was mentioned this morning, we have seen um, King's Kids and now the rescue coming onto the scene and children's content within the world of media is difficult to, to actually find. Um, and so you have quality, um, episodes, material for broadcast on social media, on, on TV, is quite significant. It's, it's being broadcast, um, or will be broadcast in Solomons. Um, it's currently, King's Kids is being broadcast in, in um, Papua New Guinea, on public television in, in Papua New Guinea. So we see things like this going further afield. We've had inquiries for other programs in communist countries as well. And so you can see through the mere fact of having programs like this in digital content able to reach far beyond what we can actually do um, as physical churches. So it's quite significant what, is, what we've just seen. Yes. I want to invite uh, Rob. Rob, you around as well? Right here in front of me. I was trying to hide. Rob and Kimberly um, run Abide Family Ministry and you've got Trent and Taylor there as well um, behind the scenes. And uh, it's significant what you both are doing now, but also have done with Arnie Shack 
years ago, then into King Kids, and then also into this. And projects like this wouldn't happen without the, the hard work, the commitment, the dedication that, that you continue to put in. And it's not just nine to five. This is... Eight to 11. Eight to 11, <laughs> you know, every day type thing. Um, and so we want to recognise... Eight to 11 p.m. There about. Eight a.m. to 11 p.m. Um, we want to recognise the work and contribution that you are making to ministry um, to impact families right around the world. So, Kyra, I want you to um, just give a little gift of our appreciation to you both for the significant work that you're doing. You know, you've pulled together today. You continue to coordinate all of us in what is needed and when it's needed um, to make this, this happen. And so we're eternally grateful as, as a church, as friends for what you are doing to, um, to make this all possible. So please accept this as a small token of our appreciation to both of you for the work that you are doing in this space. Thank you very much. And it's, it's a real honor to be able to have the opportunity to do this. Um, a real privilege and an honor and responsibility because, yeah, there's lives out there needing changing. Mm. So moving forward, if you want to see the, the episode again, you can visit therescue.au and that will have this episode and plus future episodes will be dropping onto that webpage in the future um, throughout the rest of this year and then we'll look at uh, 2025 as we uh, drop the rest of the seasons into that, that page. So therescue.au is where you can catch up and feel free to, to share it around as well. Just as we finish, just to give you a, a glimpse of the people that have been involved in this, if you have been involved in the production of, of The Rescue, I want you to invite you to come up the front with us as I also invite Sylvia to come and join us of a prayer of commitment and dedication of, of the work that is, has been done and presented this afternoon. Now this is just a, a small glimpse of those that have, have contributed to The Rescue. If we open it up, Kimberly and Rob, to everyone that has been involved in the making of the episodes, how many people are we actually looking at? So there's over 70 people so far that have been involved in this. Um, from, we've got our animator in the Philippines that we work with. We've got our sound engineer, Kevin Kemuel in Tasmania. So there's so many people from all around the place that are working in this. And thanks to all these people here today, just a sample of all the voices and people who've been behind the scenes. It needs a team to do it and all these volunteers yeah who've been putting in their time and effort, we so appreciate. Yeah, so our thanks goes to all of you for the work that you've done in uh, making today possible. Pastor Sylvia, we thank you for, and Pastor Brendan and Amanda for coming up from uh, Melbourne to join us on this weekend and to launch, be part of the launch for us. We really appreciate the work and the message that you have done. And, and Sylvia, thank you for, for coming up as well. This forms part of your package now at, at, at um, the Australian Union Conference, um, along with Bible Buddies, um, and so this forms, I guess, a, a real collection of, of um, material that's going to help accomplish a, a great mission for the kingdom. And so I want to invite you to, to pray for the launch um, that will continue to extend the kingdom of God as we move forward. I'm really excited that I can be here to support Kimberly and Rob and this amazing team behind me. And um, I'm sure that, as Rob said, eight to 11 and probably some overtime as well sometimes. Um, I wanna pray, wanna pray for you both. So can I invite you both to just come a bit more forward and um, dedicate this wonderful initiative and program and ask God to just carry it forward. So let's, let's pray together. Loving God, we just pause in this moment and we give you thanks that you're a God who loves us, a God who sees us, a God who knows everything about us, a God who has placed a calling on each of our lives and has placed a unique purpose for each of us. And today, Lord, we are actually celebrating that calling. We are celebrating the calling that you placed on Kimberly and Rob, on a vision that you put in their hearts and on the way, Lord, that you have equipped them and given them wisdom and strength and courage to continue sharing the good news with children. And Lord, we wanna pray a special blessing on them today for the way that you have inspired them, the way that your Holy Spirit has convicted them, 
And Lord, I want to thank you for their faithfulness, that even when there has been uncertainty, that they have put their trust and faith in you. So Lord, we ask for your blessing on their continued ministry, that you will continue to, to move them forward and that the work that they do, Lord, which is all about your kingdom, the king's kingdom, will continue to spread around this world and that more and more children will hear the good news of Jesus. They will hear that you have a plan for each of them and that you are coming back soon. Lord, we also wanna dedicate the rescue to you. Father, we pray that you take this program now and let it run forward. Let it go into homes that we would never, ever imagine it would reach and let hearts be transformed and turned back to you. As the verse that we read earlier today, when the hearts of parents turn to children, the hearts of children turn back to their parents, Lord, may we see this just multiplied across the world as your story is made known further afield. Lord, I pray a blessing on all these volunteers who have given of their time and their talents, their voices, their singing, their acting, everything, Lord, all the behind the scenes that happens. It takes an army to produce a program like this. But Lord, at the core of the reason for this is to lift you up, is to make you known. And is it, it's important, Lord, that we are intentional about making time to be with you. And so I wanna also pray a blessing on the parents and grandparents and carers who are here, that they will also teach their younger ones to make time for you each and every day. So thank you, Lord, we love you. And again, we just put this in your hands and we ask you to move it forward. We pray all these things in the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Thanks, Sylvia. Thank you for coming and joining us this afternoon, being part of a special launch. Thank you to the guys upstairs, the AV, Stephen on the um, PowerPoints for the day as well, and uh, really pray that you've been blessed by the day, but also this will be a blessing to others as we move forward for the, and advance the kingdom of God. Thank you for coming. Just wait, we'll get a picture of you guys. He's getting his camera out. Thank you, everyone, and um, thanks for being here. So go and share the good news about Jesus through the rescue wherever you go. So have a good rest of your day. <laughs>